If you're heavyweight champion, you die trying. He was always involved in a criminal culture, whether by choice or necessity. There were a lot of people who had an invested interest in shutting Sonny up. So many people wanted Sonny dead. The question is, who got to him first? Welcome back, episode four, coming to you from New York City. And why? With a special guest, man. It's an honor, man. We came from the same Northern California territory. Um, first bout, Hall of Famer, Yankee legend, CC Sabatha, man. Appreciate you. Appreciate and it. And welcome man. to retirement, my brother. <laughs> I appreciate Good it. Good to see you. Good to see y'all. Yes, Jack, sir. You ready? We about to start the show. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I'm good. I'm good. Dry your hands I'm off. good. I'm good. <laughs> two, two shows in a row. Two shows in a row. Ah. You you way more moist than me the last nah, two shows. Nah, that's me. Did, did you I, find? Nah, he he his hands nah, feel like two shows. I was real moist. His hands feel like yeah, I had a nice lather with baby lotion. Like and he, shit. He, <laughs> he, like he, he didn't get it. He didn't get it. Like he had peed on the shit. <laughs> my head. Like dude, what the fuck is going on? I was your hands up. I dropped my hands off and leave a wet mark on my shit. High school basketball games. I used to be so nervous that I would have to like put lotion on and everything. Then I had to go wash my hands so it wouldn't be like sweaty. Super dry. Overboard. Yeah. You never know who showed up on the set. You never know. Yeah, cool, <laughs> You're right. Always ready. You ain't got to get ready. So take me back, man. Uh, obviously, Hall of Fame career, but your emotional exit in the playoffs. Talk to me about that. Yeah, it was uh, it was crazy because I had been feeling good. Like I had, they put me in the bullpen for the for the playoffs. Um, I didn't make the roster the first round because I had my shoulder was messed up. Um, so I got a quarter zone shot. Been feeling pretty good. And I came out of the bullpen in, in Houston and mm -hmm. got the out. I was, mm -hmm. you know, I was feeling myself mm -hmm. walking off, talking shit. I was feeling good. <laughs> right. And I started thinking, like, man, I might be able to come back, like, like unretire. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, come out of the bullpen, get a couple outs. I might be able to do this. And got out there in that game in, uh, in Yankee Stadium. I think it was game four. Um, and I was feeling good up until that one pitch. You know, I let that pitch go. And it just, I could tell my arm, it kind of popped out of socket. Not kind of, it popped out of socket. Mm. And uh, ripped the capsule, tore my labrum, cuff, everything. And walking off, I, I heard like the ovation of the fans, right. knew it was going to be my last time right. in front of the fans and kind of got a little emotional. Yeah, I mean, come on, man. That's expected. <laughs> so your arm just detached. You was real calm. It subluxed. You yeah. was too calm, though. Man, I was hoping that it wasn't it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And uh, the catcher ran out. He, you know, he's trying to console me. I, the trainer kind of popped it back in. And I went back, I told the catcher to run back down there, so let me try to throw one. And when mm. I threw that one, it just, it did it again. Mm. Like, I can't even describe the feeling. It, I mean, it was one, some of the worst pain. Like, everybody, I was walking off the field limping, and everybody was like, we thought it was your knee. I was like, nah, was, my shoulder was hurting that bad. Mm. Ah. But, uh, yeah, I mean, that was the best way for me to go out. Yeah, you know on the field. Yeah, yeah, for sure. We spoke before we got on camera. Uh, you were disappointed you only have one ring. Yeah. Tell me, you felt you should have won. How many? Yeah, I mean, 19 years, you know what I'm saying? Right. One, one ring. I mean, you know, not to discredit winning the championship, it's hard, right. it's, it's hard to do, right. you know what I'm saying? Um, but playing here for this long, I mean, the goal, you know, in New York is to win a championship win. every year. It's like the Lakers, championship so, or bust. You know, winning one out of 11, that's a failure, mm -hmm. you know? Um, but I'll take that one. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. For sure. What are you looking forward to next? I mean, you're done. We, I mean, we, we, you know, we, everything comes to an end. I found myself really enjoying just being able to get back and sleep in and not be so, but then that gets old quick. Yeah. Like what is? Just kind of being around the family. I, like I did three days of like sleeping in and not doing shit. Like that gets old quick. I was yeah. like, yo, I'm going to be a bum. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So like I called my agent. I was like, yo, get me back on ESPN. Like let's start getting back into like normal life, you know what right. I'm saying? So I'm just looking forward to being a normal citizen. Like having a summer off, I had to have a summer off since 97. So just traveling with the family, kind of hanging out, kicking it and just enjoying my family. Let's go back a little bit. Like I said, you were someone, um, you know, I heard about early on, you know, you were Vallejo, I was in Sacramento. So we were the same a, year, yeah. 98, right? Yeah, yeah about yeah. an hour and a half from each other. Um, so I, I, I would definitely hear about you a lot in all three sports you played and I, I did the same. Take me back to kind of growing up and your path in sports? Yeah, uh, so I grew up in Vallejo, uh, California. Um, and it's like a, it's a, it's a big sports town. Um, the Valley Joe. It's little, it's a small <laughs> ass city, man, it's crazy. Um, 
most popular known for, you know, E-40, Mac yep. Dre. Mm -hmm. I grew up on the side of town where Mac Dre is from, actually in the same neighborhood. Um, and it's, you know, I had a cousin that played in the NFL, um, played for the Raiders, he went to the University of Nevada. So it's just kind of one of those small towns that kind of like breeds athletes. There's a lot of athletes that come out of there um, that you don't really hear about. Mm -hmm. You know, it's different sh shit happens, whatever, but, you know, super talented guy. So um, just growing up in that environment, wanting to be one of these guys that I saw, you know, I, I can name these guys, Major Norton, Jason Shelley, you know, uh, Marcel Longmire, just guys that, you know, that were around my neighborhood that, that you know, played in college that, you know, necessarily didn't make it. But could have. Um, but could have. Mm -hmm. um, so I just wanted to be around those guys that played in the park, stayed with those guys, you know, playing three sports um, and, uh, you know, just kind of kind of fell my way into baseball. Like, you know, you're talking about the boys with the mm -hmm. high, high basketball IQ. I always had a high baseball IQ, just mm -hmm. knew what bases to throw to, knew how to run the bases, knew, you know, kind of different shit about the game. And, and it just became easy and natural. So. I just kind of fell into it. Outside of baseball, I mean, people probably don't. You played, like you said, every every sport. What was your sport? Football? Would you football or basketball? Football was probably my sport. Um, basketball was fun. I mean, mm -hmm. I, but I had to work at that shit so mm -hmm. hard, man. Like, you know, I, I couldn't jump. Like, you know, like I was. <laughs> I couldn't jump. Play the play below the rim. <laughs> you it was all. Uh, so uh, I had the most fun playing basketball because I had to work at it and, you know, kind of work to be good and start and all that stuff. But. Baseball was naturally fun, and, and just football was, you know, was easy for me. Mm -hmm. So, 18 or 19, when, when did you get drafted? How old were you when you got drafted by the NBA? 17. 17. Yeah, and I remember that because I remember you going to UCLA, yeah. and I was I had thought about going yeah. there to play football, yeah. um, and I remember you going at the same time. Yeah. What, position, what position were you? In football? Yeah. Tight end. Tight end. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would have been an offensive lineman, though, like, they would have got me to college, <laughs> and I would have been 320 playing offensive tackle. So tell me what it's like 17 years old with a million dollars in your pocket from Vallejo. That yeah. shit don't happen out there. Nah, that shit was, it was bad. <laughs> it wasn't, <laughs> that's, it wasn't good the first couple of years, man. I didn't have no work ethic. I didn't know what it was to be a pro. I mean, obviously I knew how to show up and do my job when I was there, mm -hmm. but you put me back in Vallejo with a million dollars at 17, 18 with years the old. Homies, I'm not working out. Like the first off season, I didn't do shit. Like, didn't pick up a ball <laughs> until I got back to spring training. Mm -hmm. Ended up getting hurt, elbow hurt, you know, spent the year on the DL. So that kind of like delayed my, I would have been probably been in the big leagues when I was 19, as opposed to 20 if I would have worked out mm -hmm. and like actually cared about my career. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, that was just a learning experience, man. You know, growing up without nothing and then all of a sudden you just Damn. give me a million dollars in Damn. free time. I mean, I'm gonna end up 290 pounds. <laughs> 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 all, that good, all that good eating, good living. Good eating, good, good liquor, party. hanging out. Yeah. yeah when, did, when did you, because people don't understand, they think, like you said, they think you're drafted and everything is part. When do you feel like you kind of got a grasp of what was going on and you, and, and you started realizing how important the process of being a pro in the off season was important? Man, not until, not until after my rookie year. Not until after I made it to the big leagues and I like was around Robbie Alomar, Ellis Burks and all these guys and kind of seeing how they worked in the off season. Like, you know, coming from high school, you know, we just show up, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like you just do what you do and that, that is, you know, it is what it is. But I didn't know all the work that it took to get into, you know, to make all-star teams, to be a hall of famer, to do mm -hmm. some of the things that I wanted to do in the game. You know, I figured I don't have to work for it. And, you know, after that first off season, um, I, I had a really good year my first year. I won 17 games, won a playoff game, and then I came back the next year and they gave me a deal. Like, when they gave me that deal, it made me realize, like, oh, okay, like, this is, like, I need to step my shit up and, you know, kind of live up to what they expect me to be. You want to? We, we, we got to get you going. We got to get your clock firing. <laughs> <clears throat> you had an amazing span, uh, you know, obviously starting in Cleveland. But there was a time where you went from Cy Young in 07 to traded to make a run with Milwaukee to signing a great deal with the Yankees and winning the ring. Tell me what that span, that was That was a fast ass span. That was a, that, like you just said, that shit seems like all one year. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? Like I won the Cy Young in 07 and I'm thinking like, oh, I got it now. You know what I'm saying? Like I got this shit figured out. Like now I'm about to start rolling. Came back in 08 and I was the worst pitcher in the league and couldn't, couldn't get an out, you know what I'm saying? By June, had a good game against the Yankees, had a couple good starts after that, and they traded me. When I got traded, I went from last place to first place, or, you know, in, in mm -hmm. the hunt. So I'm like, 
you know, I got to step up, you know what I'm saying? So that's when I went on that good run in Milwaukee, ended up getting a deal, and then 09 kind of taking care of business and winning the World Series. But, like, that whole three-year span kind of feels like one year for me. Like, yeah. it's, it's weird, oh like, ass. just, like, maturing and kind of, like, coming into my own, winning the Cy Young in, 17, in, in 07, and then, you know, winning the World Series. And on, 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 on a winning team helped, too. No doubt. Yeah, the yeah. environment. Um, 07, you know, we had a chance to win. We, we were a winning team in Cleveland, and I felt like I was the reason why we didn't win the World Series. Like, I was trying to go out and do too much and go out and have these great games and be the storyline and the reason why we won, and I was the re- ended up being the reason why we lost, you know what I'm saying? And that was kind of a learning lesson, you know? Like, that was the best year I had in my career, and it ended up fucking it up in the playoffs because I wanted to be the guy. Come back in 09, I come here, and I'm supposed to be the guy that gave me the contract, but right. I'm looking around, I got Jeter, I got A-Rod, mm-hmm. I got mm-hmm. Cano, I got Tex. I'm like, all I gotta do is my little part, right. and we gonna win, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So it was easy for me to like make it, it was easy for me to simplify it once I got on a better team, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, play a role, yeah. yeah. Tell, I mean, you've spoke on it several times in just this brief uh, stint. How mental, pitch, being a pitcher is a lonely position. You <laughs> know like what I mean? Golf. So how exactly? So how, how much are you in your head and telling your shit self this and that? And how do you kind of balance yourself? It's all mental. It's all, it's all talking to yourself. Right, all right. Everything is talking to yourself while you're out there. It's only you mm-hmm. out there standing out there, 50,000 people. Mm-hmm. You're out there by yourself. So everything about it is mental, but it's just on to the next. No matter what happened, no matter what the result, home run, umpire didn't call it a strike, whatever, it's just the next pitch. Mm-hmm. So it's just about making sure I'm staying my, in my mechanics, making sure that I execute the next pitch. That's really all, that's all it's about. I don't think, I, can, I don't see how y'all do it, because the only thing I'll be thinking about is that ball coming back at me. <laughs> like, it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's hard. And too. Man, yeah. you might need to all Now, you know, you the, too much for him. the only time a- I think about getting hit with a line drive is when I'm not pitching. Like, if I'm, you know, sitting in my thoughts or, you know, laying down or whatever, I'm like, man, like, what if I get hit with a line drive? Never think about that shit when you're out there, uh-huh. but like it gives you, you know, chills and, and you, you think about it when, you, when you're off the field. It's yeah. weird. I can imagine you getting hit with a line dry. You ever play baseball at all? Yeah, but I, that's why I didn't play, because I was scared of the ball. You oh, played? Yeah, they making the ball dr- come at you full speed and drop all that shit y'all be doing. <laughs> I ain't got time for that. Put me on the court where I can dribble and take my time with it. Did you play football too? I was a receiver in the safe. That was nice. I was nice, was super nice. But when I got to high school, my mom and coach pulled me off the football field. You going to the it league? It was Texas, son. but you played. You, you might not know Texas, it, but you going to the league. Yeah, and it was yeah. serious. Out it was there. serious. It was serious. Like, you had to make a life. decision. They, for, I, I was nice, but they, they knew. They, I didn't know I was going to the NBA then. They saw it. I didn't. You know, I was still doing all kind of shit. Football. I was playing football in the park. Throw up, tub. You want to throw up, tackle? I'm doing all that while I'm playing basketball. Right. That was kind of like LeBron. I felt like LeBron didn't know he was going to the league. Like, what the fuck, are you playing football in the 10th and 11th grade? He was good too. Yeah. But I'm like, what is y'all doing? Yeah. Like, this motherfucker about to be the first pick, and y'all got him but out here on the normal, football court. It was court. still yeah, normal. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we like, touched on this a few episodes ago, and about how kids and we all grew up playing everything possible, and, and being a kid and not lifting weights and eating right and having trainers at a young age. Like we touched on this, and, and you know, you have a son in high school, and you told us offline that he was you know, playing baseball and basketball and getting behind in this baseball, you know, getting behind in both because he kind of felt like other kids are playing either one of those year round. Yeah, it's like pressure to pick one sport. Right. Because the kids in your class are playing one sport and they getting nice. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So when you catch up to that sport, you're like, fuck, man, I'm behind. But because you don't realize you've been playing this other sport and it's going to help you. Right. So it's, it's been that struggle back and forth with him right now, trying to figure out what he wants to do. I think I honestly think this is going to be his last year playing hoop, mm-hmm. which I would I would love to see him continue playing. Six, five, 16 years old, you never know. Right. Yep. You know what I'm saying? He can shoot a little bit. He's slow mm-hmm. as fuck, but he can move. You know, he can mm-hmm. move. He can dribble. Um, so, but you never know. You know what I'm saying? What he can turn into. So we'll slow see. kills. Slow kills. I, I what got, are you telling? I'm I got good. almost 13k in the league, baby. <laughs> slow kills. Slow kills, baby. So, what, who are some of the people you leaned on? Your vets. That who, who leaned on you, you feel like, whether it be a pitcher or a, another position that really kind of got your mental and kind of vetted you? Yeah, it's some, uh, Ellis Burks was one. Oh, gee. Yeah. Um, still, to this day, like, I can call Ellis right now, and he'll, you know, um, and Jeter. Jeter was a big one. I, like, anytime I got something going on, if, you know, I feel something going on in the media, I need to say something to the team or something, I text Jeet first, like, yo, this is what I'm thinking, blah, blah, blah. And he'll give me like a, not an outline, but he'll be like, yo, maybe you should say this. Maybe you shouldn't mm-hmm. say this to the media. Mm-hmm. Maybe you shouldn't go off on the umpire tonight. You know what I'm saying? Like different little shit. Like he'll give me, 
he'll kind of try to help me guide me. Sometimes it don't work, sometimes it do. Right. <laughs> I mean, what was it like playing with a historical franchises, the Yankees, you know what I mean? And then playing with who you play with, you know, a Hall of Famer, some of the greatest players that ever do it and doing it as a Yankee. Man, it was crazy. Uh, I didn't realize what it, what it meant to be a Yankee until I got here. Being around Yogi Bear, being around Ron Guidry, being around Whitey Ford, Andy Pettit, like you want to be on those lists. You want to, you know, try to be a part of that history if you can. Um, so winning a championship here, hopefully, I mean, hopefully, you know, puts me in some of those categories. But um, yeah, I mean, it, it's amazing to, to be able to, to say I played for the Yankees for 11 years, you know, one of the biggest sports fran franchises in the world and win a championship here and play with, you know, Ichiro, A-Rod, um, G, mm -hmm. Andy. I mean, so many Hall of Famers. It's, On it's one crazy. team, that was crazy. crazy. Yeah, <laughs> it's been crazy. I look at some of the lineup cards like that I played with, and I'm like, Insane. it's been a blessing, man. It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. I mean, we can kind of compare it to, you know, in, in basketball being a Laker. You know what I mean? No matter what, it's just, it's, it's, it's once you get there, until you get there, you don't understand it. And then all the media that comes with it. I mean, you're in the biggest media market in the world. You know, I played with the Lakers, second biggest media market. And, and, you know, our off days, how big, you know, a couple sentences can get thrown out of proportion and you be the fucking bad guy. You know like, what's crazy is that we're the news. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, you drive the news. The Lakers drive the news mm -hmm. in the NBA. The mm -hmm. Yankees drive the news. So mm -hmm. you can't even turn on Sports Center. Like, I was used to, like, in the clubhouse with the Indians, with the Brewers. We watched, you know, Sports Center shit all day. With the Yankees, we never had that shit on because it's us. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's about us. So mm -hmm. that was the biggest thing I realized when I got here is that we drive the news. So you really can't watch none right. of that shit because half of it's wrong anyway. You know what I'm <laughs> saying? Like, it's crazy. How do you handle the outside distractions of what, you know, once you get to a certain level, all-star, millions of dollars, playing for the Yankees, all the noise off the field? Yeah, that was hard. I mean, I still, I struggle with that. I mean, I ended up in rehab. 2015, you know what I'm saying? I, I mean, I struggled the whole year, not drinking, drinking, not drinking. I mean, obviously I struggled with rehab and, you know, everything my whole life. I mean, drinking my whole life, um, ended up in rehab in 15, but 15 just kind of like everything came to a head. I got into a big thing in Toronto where it was kind of like, a, almost like a little riot, um, you know, coming out of a club. And I just felt like it was time, you know what I'm saying? Like. It was a crazy time in my life. My kids were getting older. You know, they were able enough to like start reading on the internet some of the shit that was going on. And mm -hmm. I just felt like it was a good time for me to kind of like reset, hit, you know, hit the reset button and kind of start over, you know what I'm saying? And, but, but at the same time, let everybody know I got this problem. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm here, this is me. And it kind of like freed me up, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. since then I've been, mm -hmm. it's weird, man. It's like a, a, a huge weight lifted off my shoulders. Like, Owning. Everybody knows you. I'm an alcohol. Like, it is what it is. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not hiding no more. I'm not trying to sneak a drink here and there. Like, I'm just, I'm good. How did balancing that problem, being a Yankee star and having a family, how did that dynamic, how did that affect your family? I overall? think that was the biggest part of me going to rehab was what I, what, how it started to affect my family. You know, my, my, my 16 year old now, at the time, he was 11 when I went in. Yeah, I mean, you know, seeing dad coming home, you know, tipsy a couple nights after, after you know, road trips or whatever, you know, just different mm -hmm. things that, you know, my my nine year old now he sees my my wife drink a glass of wine, and he's like, oh, you you drinking again? Like, and he don't even correlate. He don't even know that I like mm -hmm. I'm an alcoholic. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, it's the funny joke in the house that like now mom gets she ragged on for drinking. Out. You know what I'm saying? And dad's an alcoholic, but it's uh yeah, I mean it, it it was it was one of the better decisions I ever made in my life. Did going you, to rehab in 2015. Did you hit a sure. dark point during that rehab? When I was in rehab was one of the best times, man. It, like, you don't have no phone. You kind of cut off. Um, but you, you talk to the people who you need to talk to, your family, whoever, you know, whoever mm -hmm. is close to you. Um, but you just kind of at peace trying to figure your shit out. You know what I'm saying? I always tell my wife, I'm like, man, I need to, like, another little stint. Like, let me just to, like, just to, re just to get away from people, you know what I'm saying? Let me turn my phone off, get away. Like, let me go to rehab for a week or whatever just to get away. But, no, nah, I mean, it was, it was just, you know, you, you just at peace at that time for sure. It's, a, it's always the people that you love most to get you to change for the better. It's always, you know what I mean? You, regardless how you go through it, we all go through it at a certain point. But, you know, even with, like when, when, when Matt's mom died, yeah. you know what I'm saying? He's a different person since his mom died. You know what I'm saying? It, it wasn't, it was tough for him for a while, but the person he is now, I know she's looking down and, and proud of him. But I'm just saying that to say 
the, the hardest parts of your life make you the best person. No, there's no sure. question the, the, the struggle to get there. I mean, since we went back to 07 right there, Jack, 08, you were fucking with us during the We Believe run. Oh, our best time. Front yeah, center, 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 center every single game, man. Every game. That's when I have the height of my season tickets. Yeah, he, was, <laughs> he, was, right? yeah, he, was, he was flying back and forth, though, to come to the game. Yeah. Yeah. He was flying I was coming to yeah. playoff games and everything. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> tell, tell us what that meant to you being someone from the Bay. You yeah. Because this shit, I mean, we still get so much love out there. I was there. just about to say, y'all right. still huge out there. Right. Like, y'all is a part of... Y'all always be a part of that fabric in the Bay just because mm -hmm. if y'all started the Warriors, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Like, for us, that was the start of the Warriors franchise. Yeah. All that shit before that didn't matter. No. <laughs> I mean, I no disrespect to Run TMC. I love them dudes, but it started in 07 for us. You know what right. I'm saying? Like, I mean, y'all forever be Al, too. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Like, yeah. And y'all was just so cool because everybody, y'all be out. Yeah, that's uh, I mean, you was from there, yeah, obviously, yeah. but y'all be out yeah. in the club, do, you know, dinner, whatever. Yeah. Like. I mean, y'all was really a part of it. So everybody tell us that though, Mr. Yeah, Fab, right. be legit. Everybody tell us sure. that. Y'all right? was really a part of it. Cause yeah, like really a part of the hood. The like that was touchable. Dope. We yeah. was out in the hood. We yeah. and then we we didn't call ourselves the uh, the Fillmore Five. We the Fillmore Five. <laughs> we the Fillmore Five. <laughs> but they don't know. We was, I mean, we was playing for the war. But if you from the Bay and know about that area, we was on yeah. the corners sm smoking in yeah. Fillmore while we NBA players. Like yeah. that shit don't happen. <laughs> that shit never happens. That shit does not. That's, but you can only do that in the Bay. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. you only get love. Like, right. I feel like you only can get love like that. Yeah. Being who y'all was in it the was back. luck because there's so much jealousy. Yeah. You know what I mean? But they was really fucking with us out there. And that fan base has always been so amazing from, you know, whether the teams are winning or not. You still got amazing fans out there. It's crazy. Amazing and uh, I was telling somebody, somebody was asking me, um, the ticket price has always been high. Like, they was, even back then, like, yeah. courtside was, like, crazy. So, they, I mean, the van, I mean, they've always packed that place out, mm -hmm. always. Supported. I wonder now, like them going to Frisco, what it's going to be yeah, like. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's still have you been there? I uh, haven't been there, but they got, but they, like I said, this is the only team that show us love. Even though I didn't win the championship with them, they still show us a lot of support. But they got our pictures up in the new arena. That's dope. You know oh, they what do? I mean? Yeah, yeah. And that, that was love. I thought that was big, you know, yeah. to, keep, to make us a part of what, the new arena. I don't know. I think it's going to be different. I think, I, obviously, I think the S is, it's a different, it, it, it's to a me, it's a different people. vibe now. Yeah. You know, to me now, it's more LA business. Yeah. I mean, that's all the tech business. That's, you know, that's supposed to be I like. I think a, you took it from like the hood's backyard. The culture. Like, it was the culture. It was, that was like. Oh, people were smoking. That was like our gym, man. Yes, you know what I'm saying? Yes, like, that's yes, our gym. Right, like, yes. that shit's right off the freeway. Right. Everybody can get there. Yes. And then you put it to, like, the billionaire's backyard. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. where it's, like, harder to get there. Like, got to cross the bridge. Got to cross the fucking bridge. All those people that's been working in Oracle, Bruh. they going to lose jobs. Well, I, some, All them people that have people, been working there for so long. Some people got to go over there. You know, I, I was happy to see a handful of people. I'm not sure how many, but I saw a picture with some of them over there. But to me, you've priced the common fan out. Yeah, you know, yep. which is unfortunate. But you should think it used to be a vibe, and then the club down below, my where my mom rest in peace is back oh, there taking man. shots. Pops yep. is out on the balcony when people are smoking cigarettes. My dad's smoking joints. Some <laughs> people are smoking weed in the arena. Like that's yes. what Oracle was. That's what, Oracle, bro. That's what the was Bay is. Though. Right, you facts. Know what I'm saying? Yeah. So tell me about your Raiders, man. I, I know you're a big Raider fan. We four, four. Yeah, that's all I can say. Yeah. Um, what about the AB situation? I mean, I was really look as a fan of football is my first love. You're a Raider you know fan? Or no, I'm a Niner fan. I fuck with Chucky though. I yeah. fuck with y'all. I fuck with y'all, Coach Gruden. Nah. I fuck with Chucky. You don't fuck with Chucky. Mm -mm. Think about the moves he's made and what if, what if you well, what's going on from them moves. Well, I mean, what you think? Talk, talk, I mean, I mean, you, I mean well, I like Josh. Oh no, you also do what you want. Deal. Deal. Shit, they they somebody like him. Deal. Somebody yeah. like Chucky. Man, <laughs> he got a ten year deal. I don't want to get like kicked out of my season ticket and shit. So <laughs> I don't want to go too hard. <laughs> but uh, I like Josh Jacobs. Mm -hmm. I like Waller. I think we got some pieces to build going to going towards uh, Vegas, but we might need a new quarterback. Um, I knew AB was going to be a problem. When he was in Pittsburgh, obviously they got the organization to, to kind of contain that mm -hmm. kind of personality. Mm -hmm. In Oakland, I knew we didn't. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I knew we just wanted the talent and not really c we'll control with it. Yeah, I mean. What, what did you, I mean, as a professional athlete from there, that's your favorite team, but as a professional athlete overall, what did you think about the way AB maneuvered in that? Because me and him kind of had different views on it. I was, well, as a fan of the team, I was happy because he was off the squad. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I didn't care how he maneuvered out of it. Um, as an athlete, I mean, as an athlete, I feel like I want guys to have more freedom. So the way guys are saying in the NBA, fuck it, trade me, or else I ain't playing, I, want, I, I, I love that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know, however you got to get out of the situation you, you don't want to be in, yeah, do it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I wish I had the balls to do that shit in 2005 when I was in Cleveland. Fuck you, trade. You know what I'm saying? Like, we was <laughs> trash and... 
it wasn't fun. It was just a bad situation. But I, you know, you just kind of that's just not the era we were from. You know, mm-hmm. that's just Mm-mm. you know, basketball is different and sports different now. So, um, but I'm not mad at it. I, I, you know, it is what it is. I love the fact that he was he was trying to speak and 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 determine where he wanted to play. You know, and know his worth. You know, what I'm saying that's cool. But he, he he was acting like a diva by the way he was going by doing it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Then not only was he being a diva, now you got people that has nothing to do with him or, or his or his football success coming out with mess to try to just throw more stuff on That's him to try, try to like. destroy him. That's you know what, what I'm saying? Like, yeah. And I felt like he gave them the ammunition to do that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And if, if he was if he was just Worried about his career and handled it the right way without going into the media. Probably was just he, set out. It was just a conversation. He would be successful in Oakland because Carr wasn't going to never be able to give him the ball the way he wanted the ball. So he was going, it was going to be this by, by now, he would have been like off on Gruden. So Carr's not that. Question. He wouldn't have been able to get Antonio Brown the ball the way he wanted the ball. You got to think, he you know what I'm saying? saying? is one of the greatest. Yeah, no question. And no then question. he went to Brady and Brady right. can get him the ball. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, I don't feel like, I don't, I don't feel like Carr would have took enough chances downfield. Almost like with Baker, what you seen with Baker and, and Odell. Odell, yeah. yeah. The same, yeah. But, oh, but AB ain't going to be like, mm-hmm. he ain't going to get on the podium and be like, that's my guy, but he gonna get up. What the fuck is y'all doing? Right. <laughs> Give me the fucking ball open right. every time. You know Business what I'm was booming yeah. last and that year. That wasn't gonna happen. Yeah. You right. know what I'm saying? Exactly. We was booming last Business year. Business was booming last year. <laughs> so it was gonna come to that point, right. and, you know, at, eventually. Yeah. See, I think him going with Brady though would have been a great move. Mm-hmm. I think you know when you go into certain situations like the Spurs, like the Patriots, like the Yankees, Moss. like the Lakers, like the Warriors, like. You buy, no matter I and I've never a, a superstar, but no matter what your ego may have been, like you come into an organization that they expect excellence, and you mature or you fit in. Yeah. You don't try to stand out, and mm-hmm. I think that would have been a perfect situation for him. No, when you go into those locker rooms, no matter how much a leader you are, different you are, you look to be, to kind of the, le- the to kind of be led a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Because you know that they do shit the right way. You right. know you watch these franchises win championships. So certain locker rooms you walk into. You leave, you check your shit at the door. Mm-hmm. Yep. Even if you don't want to, you, right. you do. Got to. Because you want to fucking win. Right. And that's what we all want to do. Mm-hmm. So, it, you know what I'm saying? It, it makes you check your shit when you go to these these prestigious, pre- prestigious franchises, I guess. The guys that want to win, though. Yeah. The guys that got I their think perfect. everybody want to win at the end of the, like, when you get there and you, you see what it is, you want to win. <sighs> I've been, on, I've been on teams with where guys just didn't, didn't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> First and fifteenth. What day is it? <laughs> Shit, man. I didn't give a fuck, bro. That's the worst. I couldn't yes. with nobody man, like that. I should, we, I, I, we had to at times. I couldn't do that. Yep. Tell me what it was like now you're going from Major League Hall of Fame pitcher, playing with a little EBSPN, but you're talking football now. Tell me about that. how dope is that? I thought I that when I, when I seen that, I was like, yeah, because I wanted to do that when I first came out and I went through some shit and never got back on it, but you're out here talking football on a real level. You know what's fun? is What's crazy is that it's, it's fun. It's obviously, it, I, I don't watch baseball. Like, I mean, I watch it when it's live and I'm there and I watch the Yankees, but I can't tell you shit about Garrett Cole, really? Like, <laughs> I only watch him when I'm, you know what I'm saying? But I can tell you about Pat Mahomes because I watch every one of these fucking games. Yeah. I can tell you about... Teddy Bridgewater and whoever else, because mm-hmm. I watch football and Mark I watch Jackson. hoop. Like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I really, really watch it. Like game seven, I was going like the next morning. I was going into ESPN to, to you know do the analyst thing, and they were going to ask me about the World Series. But it was the Warriors was playing, and that was the night Steph broke his hand. So like I was watching the game. You know what I'm saying? I wanted right. to see the updates and shit. Like <laughs> I mean, they were getting blown out by Phoenix that night, but <laughs> it was game seven, and everybody's yeah, like, "Hi, sure, oh, you're not watching baseball? Fucking the Warriors playing right now? I'm watching this? Come on, like, man, you know where I'm from?" <laughs> To, to, you talked about the Warriors. I mean, they had a hell of a run, a dynasty. They built a dynasty up in, in a five-year span, three championships, should have been four. Um, tell me what it was like to be a fan, first of all, for their success. They took the next step. Well, you know, they took We Believe to another step. Um, but tell me what that whole run was like to see it start, be in the middle of it, and then end the way it did, and, and then end with KD leaving, end with Steph breaking his hand. Like, yeah. tell me what it's been like. It was dope to be there with you guys, like, we believe in all that stuff, be a, like, be a fan and be a part of that, and then kind of watch them take the next step. When they took the next step, it was still unbelievable. Like, they about to win, like, with shooters? You know what I'm saying? Like, I didn't... It was I never before done. I still couldn't believe it. Like, and just watching them, like, it was unbelievable to watch what they did, and... Still amazing, like changed the game, and it was and it was, it was the Warriors too, like at the like, squad. It's the Warriors, like Your they squad. about to win a championship, like it was crazy, man, to watch them win three out of five, and it's it's fun. To, I mean, it's awesome as a fan, like the dynasty ended, but 
I mean, I'm not mad. You know what I'm saying? Most they can't take back what we in. did. Now, so right, people, right, people get mad and frustrated and all that. But, but bro, like, we're from where the Warriors came from, which y'all took back. it to, yep. and with the guys excelled it to, like, you cannot on, be man. mad if you're Come from on. the Bay mm-hmm. at watching that franchise and what they did. Right. You know what I'm saying? So it was good. I mean, it, it's fun. And I still think they one player away. You know what I'm saying? Clay come back. Steph get healthy next year. You put Draymond back in the role that he needs to be in. Mm-hmm. And, you you know, you flip D'Angelo, they still might be one player away from being right back. Yeah, I'm not mad at that. Do you well, What team, what basketball team do you support out here? Brooklyn. Okay. Yeah, Brooklyn. Okay. It's uh, it's just, it's fun, the energy in there. It's different. You know, we went to the game. Yeah, we went to the game. You see the paper yeah. planes. Yeah. You know what time it is, yeah. man. <laughs> you see the paper planes. You I'm know think, what time it is, I'm thinking about other man. paper planes. <laughs> 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 well, so, so now the team you support got KD, yeah. got Kyrie, DeAndre Jordan, a good young team. I think I compare them to the Clippers in the West because I think they had a, a core of guys last year without a superstar they really bought in they did and you know they, they made Careful the playoffs word. and did you know they did the things and now you add some superstars some come with a little baggage um you think that hurt, you think that hurts a guy like what's this what's the center uh with the fro mm-hmm. he was uh, balling allen uh, show Jared, enough. Al- Jared Allen. Jared Allen. You I think call him like, show enough from last year. you Dragon. think it hurts his development or like Karis <laughs> Levert's development because they, you know, kind of, Levert's kind of like standing around just like spot-up shooting now where he was like... A playmaker. Turning into a playmaker. Mm-hmm. He was almost turning into like an Oladipo mm-hmm. type mm-hmm. for me where he could, you know, get buckets and score from all over the floor. Yeah, and he, now he's he, kind of standing around. He's and, a solid six man. He's a solid, I think he's a great... He's going to be a great six-man scorer for them because with Kyrie and KD, they have enough scoring. Right. They're going to need those young... Him and Dunwitty, they're going to need them to come off the bench mm-hmm. and create some scoring and, and some energy off the bench for that team, and that's going to take them over the hump. You got to have guys like KD and Kyrie to finish games in the playoffs, especially in the fourth quarter. But you need these young guys to sustain it through the regular season. But I love I love Kyrie. Mm-hmm. But I look at, like, Jason Tatum mm-hmm. and, like, what... He kind of stepped back, but, like, looking at him now... He's stunned his growth, but right. now he's but out now here acting a fool. Him. He is unreal. I mm-hmm. love Jason he's Tatum. Unguardable. That's how he came package. into the league that first year, remember? And then, package. And then step he, back. But then he took a step back, yep. you know what I'm saying? But now he's back to where, you know, he's kind of free because he ain't got Kyrie there. Yep. And now he's, you know. It's, see, it's interesting to me because I was a role player and I knew my role. It was never an issue going places and playing. But obviously, like, when I got to play with someone like Kobe or you go to the Warriors or, you know, playing with Chris and Blake, you kind of have to find your rhythm and find your role. So it, I think early on, all these teams, like the, the players you mentioned, it, it's kind of still a filling out process. You know what I mean? Because you know, I mean, as a team, how important chemistry is. Mm-hmm. And it takes time to build chemistry. And when you're adding such a dynamic player, such as Kyrie, and then, you know, Jared Allen, and now you're sharing minutes with DeAndre Jordan. You know what I mean? When, you know, so it's just, it, it's a process that takes time. And I think they'll figure it out. But the, the tough part is, is once you figure it out this year, you got to figure it out again next, next year. Next year, because KD, because that's a whole different dynamic. Right. Yeah. You know, but I think they definitely have it. If chemistry and, and people stay healthy, you know, by the time KD's ready to be KD, they have a, just as good a chance to get out the East as anybody. anybody else to me. Watching Kyrie up close and knowing what KD is, if KD comes back to what he is, they might be one of the best teams in the mm-hmm. NBA, bro. Ain't no mm-hmm. mic to it. Because mm-hmm. hey. they got a legit center, mm-hmm. DeAndre, so mm-hmm. I think they can. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and that, that young kid is nice. Jared Allen, is, yeah. is, that, is that his last name? Yeah. Jared Allen, yeah. He's nice. Yeah. Like, he had a good he game last night. He played night. real well last night. He played real well. Dinwiddie, well. too. I feel like Dinwiddie's kind of like JR a little bit. Yeah. Where he can, like... He's a go. wild card. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And they got, they're got solid, man. The NBA is, you know, we're, we're a handful of weeks in the NBA, and there's still, you know, there's still a few questions. You know, obviously the Warriors dynasty is over. Who do you like in the West? Man, I like the Clippers. I think they got the best team just because of from what they did last year. Mm-hmm. Um, I like that. I like the fact that Kawhi went there. Kind of opens up the NBA a little mm-hmm. bit, you know what I'm saying? If he Fairly. went to the Lakers, it would have been a wrap. No fair. And so I think Dame, I want to see Dame win, bro. Or I just want to see him play deep into the playoffs. You Everybody, know what I'm yeah, I do too. And just hit some big shots. So I think it would be fun, you know what I'm saying? What do you think about see. the Lakers? Obviously, they're going to be good. I think Danny Green going to be huge for them. Huge. I think Danny Green going to be huge. Jack had a game, one game we was watching that shit over at, was it the first game of the season? We, yeah, it was opening night, right? Uh, opening we was night. over at Viola getting right, watching the game, and he just didn't. He was off Danny Green for the night, but Danny Green killed him. I'm just like, bro, he's a veteran. He's been there. He's done deep. that. He's and dead. they lost. <laughs> <laughs> Danny Green get 28. The Lakers not going to win. Exactly <laughs> well, what I'm saying. Yeah, no, I mean, Come I agree on. with that. He ain't, no, he ain't going to have to. Danny Green's going to 15. Yeah. Then the Lakers are in trouble. But I'm saying a proven <laughs> winner, knockdown no, shot. No, he's definitely a proven vet. Yeah. I, you know, I, I'll take Danny Green over a lot of guys. Yeah. I put a bet in for AD to win the 
MVP? Well, to me, if AD wins MVP, that makes me feel like the Lakers have the best shot to advance in the playoffs because that means AD carried them over the majority of the season and LeBron got to save. LeBron could be LeBron in spots. I'm a Laker fan and just thinking mentality and and big picture. If you see superstar LeBron all season, they're probably going to run out of gas in the playoffs. But I feel like LeBron said all the right shit on media day, right? Like he was going to play the offense through AD, all that stuff. But the first couple of weeks, we've been seeing superstar LeBron. Now, he well, got first, a lot to prove, though. That he was don't after. average 40, 10, and 10. He not playing hard to me. He got a lot of. He can see. see. It's easy for him. He don't have to work. Your views all on LeBron. Saying, I mean, but all I'm saying you, is, so you hold you on. You my views, didn't you? I'm not mad at him. See? So, but hold on. So he died. to me, the beginning, he was going through AD to see what we had, and then people started talking about he lost a step see? and all this shit. But that's and then what I'm you, saying. So like, is he gonna you be able to step back? So can you? That's that media market in LA. You yeah, know what I mean? Can you take is, a step? That you, is what it is. That's you, on him. Can you, I was saying, can exactly. You, can, I know. Exactly. Can, can you back. take that step back and say, "Fuck what they're talking about. I'm still gonna. My, I have a plan here. I'm gonna ride AD's motherfucking he ass all to. season. That's the only way they're gonna win. And then I'm gonna give you my shit in the playoffs. That's the only way they're gonna win. And then everybody like. You let him forget in the regular season. Who gives a fuck? In but it's the hard. Season? You know, yeah, I get it. During I, I the get playoffs, that. If he shows up scoring 40, 10, and 10, no, ain't nobody going to say shit. If he, don't, if, he, if he lets AD win the MVP, lets the offense go through them, and then he shows up in the playoffs, LeBron, yeah. ain't nobody going to give just, a fuck because they're going to win. I just feel like he's just that talented and that much better than everybody in the league that he can average 40 without even breaking a sweat, dog. But it's but the they, game, he not gonna the, be the, able to do that the all the way through bullied? June though. Yeah, but I mean, but not all the way through June. Year Seventeen. Oh, man, I think he can, man. He make it look so easy. I, maybe I'm. Just, maybe I just think he's better than what he is. He, but no, he, he can right. he's, he's that night. good. He's that good. But, but this is the same grab I, I used to watch him in high school, and I'd be like, just score fifty fucking points. And he, but he's just a basketball he player. The right way. He, he won't right do way. it. He played the right way. Yeah. But even in high school, I'd be like, yo. Take the fucking game oh, over. I was in Cleveland. That's right. I was in Cleveland. Right, you know what I'm saying? Right, so I've been watching right. him since he's a freshman. Yeah. Right. But he just plays basketball the right way. He's right. always going to pass to the right shot. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's he's going to play it the right way. So maybe that's just me wishing I was LeBron if yeah, I had LeBron <laughs> skills. <laughs> Everybody. And I could just go out there and average 50. <laughs> you know what I mean? I average 15 by myself. If I had LeBron, I would average 50. Mm. <laughs> and Man, you, but I don't know. Maybe I. And you'd be, be, out, there, the, and most, you be out there burning too, after 50. <laughs> loaded. <laughs> Loaded. Loaded. Sure did. Nah, I, th- I think he got to let AD win an MVP, turn into LeBron in the playoffs, and they win. I agree. Because he's going to need that because Kawhi yeah, is it's a gonna be a monster. monster. That's the best Kawhi's recipe. That's the best need recipe. Because Kawhi is a monster. What do you think about Houston? I don't know yet. They don't play no defense. Mm-hmm. I like the fact that... Uh, their coach don't even came spell defense. They don't even <laughs> Who's their coach? No Dan Phoney. <laughs> <laughs> he has... <laughs> he get more jobs than anybody. <laughs> He more did. opportunities than anybody. That's every sport, though. They you got one coaches. guy like that. You got one guy like that. Like, he ain't won nothing, but he keep, keep getting jobs, keep getting There's some football coaches like that, too. Yeah. Baseball, too. Yeah. They keep getting jobs. Eastern, but I, I like the fact that they close. Mm-hmm. Westbrook and Harden. I, I think, think that's, that's going to help them. If, help if them. they have a chance to make it work, it's because of that. Yes, because everybody, the first game, everybody was making a big deal out of them, them arguing on the court. And I was like, nah, that's perfect. That's homeboy that's shit. Perfect. That's yeah. homeboy because shit. That, it's game one and they already in it. Like, mm-hmm. that's like they are they they engaged. Gonna fi- they're going to figure it out at they some gonna point. They're going to figure this shit out. Mm-hmm. But they just got to figure out how to play defense. Yeah. The way you play is different when you're playing with your homeboy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Way but, you know, you care more, you give more. You know what I'm saying? And you can always be like, yo, what the fuck is you doing? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, and and, reel it in. Yeah. And it ain't ain't taking this hate either. Yeah. Who you like in the East? Man, I like Boston. I like Boston. I like... uh, Tatum is tough, man. I like Tatum. I've been trying to tell people, to me, he's so skilled. I like him, but I like Tatum. Um, That's my... I I like Boston a lot, but I I still like the 76ers too, and Beeb, obviously. They ain't got Um, nothing. Boston ain't got nothing inside the paint. Yeah. What they going to do there? Yeah. They lost when, they, when, they, when they deal with Philly, mm-hmm. when they deal with Philly, them two big boys, yeah. Yeah. it's going to be problems. I like Philly. I mean, to me, it's, it's, it's Philly's East. Uh, I like Milwaukee. You can never overlook Milwaukee, but I just, Philly's tough. Yeah. You know, Philly's real Milwaukee's tough. Milwaukee's bigger than Philly, though. I know another they got the They got the two Lopez brothers now, and they got You can't play free. both of them, though. Why you can't? One, you can't the one's a the shooter. Time. You can't play them the one's same a shooter. One's a shooter. Yeah, but you can't play both of them the same if time. You, man, they're so slow. Huh? And the pick, oh, come on, man. I, 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 so I've been on the Lopez twins since, like, their brother played AU with me. So they used to be twins uh, at a little AU shit, like, underneath the bleachers, always getting into some shit, like, stealing purses and, <laughs> like, doing shit underneath the bleachers. And then all of a sudden, one day, these motherfuckers are seven feet tall, bigger than me, going to Stanford. I'm like, yo, those are the little homies that used to be underneath the stands, stealing purses and shit. I remember. They from, where they, they from, like, Sac? Uh, no, they're 
were from. Our team was based out of Stanford? Fresno. Oh, okay. But I'm not sure where uh, where they were from. That's crazy. They went to Stanford, right? They yeah, they went to Stanford. Stanford. Yeah, yeah, they're, from, yeah, they're yeah. definitely from Cali. Yeah. Good dudes, real good dudes. Happy out of the way uh, their career ended. That's so awesome. let's, let's jump back into baseball. I mean, to me, it always seems like, and I don't think it'll happen to you because you're still doing so much stuff. You're, you're going to be doing so much stuff, but stars in baseball kind of get lost in the mix post post uh, post career because they're not as vigilant on social media. Mm-hmm. Like, what is your thought about that? No, I mean, that's just the nature of baseball players, I think. The nature of, of baseball in general is to kind of be private. You okay. know what I'm saying? You have to be humble. The game is hard to play. You know what I'm saying? If you succeed three out of ten times as a hitter, you're a Hall of Famer. You know what I'm right. saying? So it's hard to play. So in your nature, I think, as a baseball player, is to be humble and kind of reserved. So, yeah, there's no big social media presence. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not, I don't even have Twitter on my phone. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, um yeah, I mean, I, I just think that's just kind of the nature of the guys. And a lot of the guys don't even want to be. They don't care about mm-mm. it. They don't even want to be on TV or, you know, any of that stuff. So it's kind of the guys that you see in baseball that, that do it are the guys that want to. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> How do you, do you feel that them being not as present uh, on the social platforms hurts baseball? Yeah, I think it definitely hurts the sport. And I think, um, I mean, you know, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's a big problem. Obviously, a lot of kids not playing. We can't get, you know, a lot of viewership. Um, you know, it's even hard for me to, it's hard for me to watch this shit, you know, right. if I don't have right. anybody in it. You know, he was just saying, talking about Mike Trout, you know, him being out in public, you know, he would much rather you not, not, no, recognize, him. not recognize him. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Or not be noticed. And he's the biggest player in the game. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Aaron Judge, you're going to notice him. He's mm-hmm. 6'9", 280 pounds. Even still, he still don't, you know, he still you know, don't want to be, you know, out there like that. So I just think it's, you know, just, just the nature of baseball makes it hard for us to be on social media every day with, you know, you got being flashy. Every day. Yeah. The shit is hard. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You know, you're going to fail a lot. Mm-hmm. What are your thoughts about people like Mike Trout and, and some of these other players signing these long-term deals and then like a situation like with Bryce Harper where he decides not to take the money and go somewhere else and then, you know, his, his former team... Yeah, no, nah, I mean, I think it's good. The baseball teams are making so much money. Mm-hmm. Like, it, it's crazy uh, the amount of money that's in the game and, and the amount of money that's out there for these for guys to make. I think it's dope. I mm-hmm. think, I think, you know, I would have wanted Mike Trout to make $50 million a year. I mm-hmm. want Mookie Betts to make $60 million a year. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, uh, these guys deserve it to me. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So I, I think it's great that these guys are signing these huge deals. And I think it's good that these guys are signing nine, ten-year deals with one team. Mm-hmm. You'll, you'll get back to seeing franchise players. You'll get back yeah. to seeing the Derek Jeter play with one franchise. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. The, the, you know, that one guy that played with that one franchise that their whole career. that's so lost in sports now. That's lost in Completely. sports big time with you free know, agency free and the way. But then on the flip over. side, it's different, you know, for being a purist and for being from back in the day, like that's what we like. But then at the same time, the excitement of moving parts now as superstars is what makes the NBA are starting to rise so much. That's true. Mm-hmm. You know, That's so true. it's it, it, it kind of goes both ways. I mean, I just thought it was crazy that, you know, Washington loses Bryce Harper. They're the play-in wild card, and they win a championship. Man, sometimes when you lose that one super, that one superstar was, it's all, like, most of the time it's all about them. It kind of, like, it's just them and then it's y'all. No chemistry. So then when he left, it didn't matter. Mm-hmm. It was just it's us. Y'all. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So now it's just us anyway. Uh-huh. So it, it just kind of makes it better a little bit when it's that that one guy is that big. You, you can rally around just your, your group. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? I think that's kind of what they did. And I, they I was able to free up yeah. some money, not giving and him I saw, 300 million. And I saw how many people they signed with the money they were going to give him. Yeah. And, I mean, not for nothing, Bryce Harper had, you know, he's won the MVP, but ever since then he hasn't really been mm-hmm. what people expect him to be. Mm-hmm. Mike Trout is what... what Bryce Harper gets the attention that Mike Trout should, should get, get, and Mike Trout's the player. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, and just an interesting um, perspective coming from someone that, you know, is in that space. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, it just kind of is what it is, and it, it was it was cool to see them dudes. I, mm-hmm. You know, I, I'm friends with Scherzer, so it was good to see him, you know, kind of come back and win game seven. Um, nah, that, that, was, that was fun to see, and to see, you know, Michael Taylor, Juan Soto, all them yeah. young dudes, um, Howie Kendrick. Yeah, he um, was clutch. Yeah, he all was huge all playoff. throughout the playoffs, man. And there's so many, so few African Americans playing the game, right. so to see him kind of do his right. thing was dope. It, I mean, it's, uh, he was huge for them. It was good. Being someone that played multiple sport, I kind of saw you brought your swag to baseball with your hat, the way you wore your hat, 
eventually coming out and motherfucking playing in Jordans. You know, tell me, <laughs> tell me, tell me what you think about, you know, what you brought to the game. Uh, I just tried to bring, I guess, the crest, Vallejo, you know what I'm right. saying? Like myself, um, just my authentic self, whatever, to the game. I mean, it was hard. A lot of people hated me at the did, when I first see, I came out. That, did they? You know what I'm saying with my hat and uh-huh. you know baseball is kind of a conservative game. And he was on that Cali swag, I, you know. So yeah. jersey was, baggy. Yeah. I was grabbing Unbutton. the ball in my hand. You know what I'm saying? I get the third out. I get the ball in my hand. Like they didn't like that shit. There was a lot of shit that people didn't like about me when I first came up. So um, I had to play good. I had to pitch. I had, had to, to. I had to perform to be able to do what I wanted to mm-hmm. bring. You know what I'm saying? So. It, you know, it ended up working out. What do you mean, get the ball with your hand? What you mean by that? So, like, if, if I get the third out, they throw it to the third baseman. Yeah. Like, I'll just grab it with my hands. It's kind of a thing I started doing in high school, and we had an old third baseman name was Travis Fryman. He was old school. Um, he didn't like that shit. He hated it. So, half, the, the whole first half of the season, he would throw that shit hard. Like, like most of the guys, like, when I was in the minor leagues, they'd loft it. They'd loft it to yeah. me. And I'd, you know, grab it. He would throw that shit hard. I'd just grab it with my hand. Fuck it. And get right back on the mail, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> so like I had one good game against Detroit, and halfway through the game he stopped doing that shit. Yeah. And and it just kind of you That's know kind of left me alone. Nah, There's yeah. not too many African Americans in baseball. Why do you think that is? Uh, it's hard, man. It's, it's a it's it's a one of those sports where it's expensive to play. Um, so at an early age with the travel ball, it's expensive to play. You know, you need gear. Um, I think um, in high school. You know, I mean, in college, you can't get a full scholarship to play baseball. Really? So the most you can, you know, the, the most they give guys is, you know, 50%, 60%. So us growing up, no chance you know, we play football and, and baseball. So you play football and baseball, mm-hmm. and you got a scholarship to go to UCLA to play football and Cal to play baseball, and it's 50% baseball. Like, yeah, you, you got to gotta go, take the football you scholarship. Take it's, not, it's not even a, you know what I'm saying? It's not even the option coming right. from where we came from. Right. So that eliminates us. Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, eliminates us from college baseball right mm-hmm. there. Um, so that's that's a huge problem. I think, um, you know, I think baseball is one of those sports where, you know, like my dad was taking me out, you know what mm-hmm. I'm saying, every day. And I think, you know, the last, you know, this last generation, I guess I feel like a lot of the dads been incarcerated, you know what I'm saying? And baseball is one of those sports where your dad's got to teach you that sport. Mm-hmm. And it's wow. been hard in the hood to, have fathers around old mm-hmm. enough to like baseball and to teach their kids that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's a lot of different contributing mm-hmm. factors, but it's a big-ass problem in, yeah. in the game. I think basketball has stolen some of that, too. But for mean, sure. Just the hype of basketball. The hype of basketball, yeah. like you said, the moving parts, the superstars mm-hmm. moving, mm-hmm. everybody, is they're very visible. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? We buying Kyrie shoes, we buying Jordan, we buying Kobe's and mm-hmm. KD's. Um, is way more appealing, mm-hmm. and and basketball players are more like us. Mm-hmm. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I mean, we can see ourselves out there on that. We court, can see ourselves out there. We don't really see ourselves well, on the field. But when I was growing up, you saw yourself. I on saw the field. R- Ricky Henderson. Come on, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like that hey, was me. I saw myself out there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Kids in the hood can't see themselves on a baseball field no more. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's too bad because I loved it. Because I mean, I loved. I played it through high school. I still play traveling softball. Like I really loved baseball and I put the twins, I think I put the twins in it too early because they excelled in football and basketball and then they could hit baseball, but no one else could hit. So mm-hmm. the game was too slow. So then that defense sucks. This is uh, terrible. You know what I mean? like, <laughs> and I'm like, they're four or five and you know, I, they cry and we have to go to practice and don't want them. I'm just like, I'm not going to make my kids do anything yeah, when it right. comes to sports. So, you know, I kind of had to pull away and I was hurt, but I got a 11 month old. He's going to play baseball. <laughs> I'm motherfucking sure Ashton is going to play baseball. And by the time he's old enough, going to get one of these $500 million contracts. No doubt. It's going to be crazy. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> <I'm> sure. <laughs> Tell me about your Jordan collection. I heard it's Insane. Yeah, I got a lot of J's, man. I've been. Uh, we need to go shopping in this closet. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I don't. Need, I'm not even. I, I like like the kick. It's like the, I need some Air Max, some runners. But some go ahead. Runners, huh? Yeah. <laughs> nah, um, I've been with. Jo- I signed with Jordan in '07. So I mean, you know. Those, That's the same year I signed. Them boxes. Uh, what? what? Oh, 07, 08. When did your boxes stop coming, Jack? My boxes. He said stopped. stopped. My boxes stopped coming in 14. So if, if MJ sees this right now, what would you say to MJ about your boxes? MJ, I remember, I'm gonna take you back, you gave me my deal right down the sideline when I signed with the Bobcats. And unfortunately, somebody who's working, that was not working for your company now, took my deal. It ain't number the conversation. I need them boxes need back. Them boxes I appreciate back. it, man. And if he don't get this message, 
CC gonna get it. Hey, <laughs> if you do get this, man, you watching this, please keep sending my boxes. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I care about. I just need them boxes, bro. Exactly. No, they mean a lot, bro. People don't understand. Think, people people don't understand, understand, bro. I nah, never got man. the boxes like y'all got, but I but but growing up, not being able to afford shit to just having boxes of Jordans delivered of, of all shoes no, like, delivered I mean, to your house. I had my first pair of Jordans. I was 17 years old. You know what I'm saying? Like. I was 16. Senior in high school. You know, my mom busted her ass, like, went to the mall and, like, showed up at my game. We playing Hogan wow. Vallejo. She showed up at the game with Jordans, and, like, I cried. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, I'll never forget that. So I wore them to school, played in the game with them, wore them to the party. So and dope. so dope. <laughs> so All dope. four, okay, in the same pair of Jordans, because I only had one pair. <laughs> Did everything in one pair of Jordans. It was just versatile. Come on, man. Just versatile as Now nah, I got something to give away to people. That ain't, you know, like, it was, it, it was a blessing. So, Mike, I need them boxes back, man. I need them, man. But anyway, sure. man, back, back to your collection. Yeah, no, I mean, I got a lot. It's crazy. I give a lot of them away, though. My, mm -hmm. I, I got three cousins that wear 15s. Oh, it's perfect. And, uh, and Vallejo, so they get all the boxes. Uh, well, I know they stay fresh. Yeah, but <laughs> one of my little cousins, though, he lived out here for like five years. The la He just moved back. So he would get the boxes. I had to get the Jordan app to see, like, what shoes was dope. Because, you know, my old ass, I'm like, out the loop. you just take them. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? This nigga was taking all the He giving you the team Jordans. Yeah, he giving me the <laughs> team Jordans. Yeah, Jordan. keeping the retros. <laughs> giving you the team <laughs> He was like, oh, no, nothing came good today. This was, this was good. I'm like, yo, I got to be, I gotta beat you to the mailbox to That's get my crazy. fucking shoes? To get your yeah. shoes. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. But, uh, That's big man, man. it's fun, though. It's, it's, it's cool to be a part of it. It's fun yeah. to be a part of brand, for yes, sure. Yeah. yeah, that's dope. So being from the West Coast, and we definitely have a certain <laughs> type of music and, and swag and, and flair, and then you're kind of you're a New Yorker now. You know, you've been out here for, what, 10 plus years? Yeah, 11 years. You know, so what is, what, what's your music game like right now? Man, right now, I, I was just driving in right now, I was listening to the Blueprint 2. Um, That's what New York could do to you. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> uh, but I still got like, you know, I still got my old Vallejo. Forever hyphy. Always. Forever. <laughs> hyphy veteran. Yeah. Man, rest, in, rest in peace, Mag Dre. But, uh, yeah. Nah, so that'll always be like, that's always, just, that's just a right. part of me. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Um, and then I'm a big, I've always been a big whole fan. But right now, like new music, the baby. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I fuck with the baby. Um, who's, your t who's your top five rappers all time? Mac Dre is number one for me for sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. Pac, Snoop, Hov, and Biggie. Who's nice. yours? My top five? It's your top five. Yeah, Scarface, Pac, Jay-Z, Biggie, Bun B. You wanna know something Bum crazy B. as fuck? Bun B, nice. Scarface DM me the other day asking when we gonna play golf. That shit blew my fucking mind. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Who the fuck is this? Family. That's family. That's <laughs> brother mob, right? That's yeah, his IG. Yeah, that's family. He said, he said uh, Matt, when we gonna get out there and play golf? I said, who the fuck is this? <laughs> yeah, Scarface, yeah. The fuck? And, he, and, and he's running for something in Houston yeah, he's right in, now. Yeah, I saw oh, you. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah, a, uh, he's yeah, a congressman no right yeah, now. Yeah, congressman. That's dope. Shout out to Scarface, man. Willie man. D. Him and Willie D. Shout that's out dope. Scarface. My top five would be Pac, Snoop, Jay, Biggie, Nipsey. I knew it. I, did. So I, I knew Nip was five. Yeah, I knew, yeah, I knew yeah. yeah. That shit Cause I get it. stuck, Jack knows I be getting stuck on shit. So I, my, ever since he knew me, it was all pop. All oh, pop. Yeah. And yeah. then my brother put me on uh, Nip in like 2009, 2010, and it was, it was all, all, all Nip. My little yeah. cousin yeah. put me on Nip. Yeah, Matt, like, it's, all it's, Nip. It's all Pac or Nip with Matt. Yeah. But the, I didn't listen to Jay-Z until I got to the minor leagues. I didn't listen I to Jay-Z till college. Cause we didn't, like, we wasn't really bumping Jay on the West Coast. We had like, I only listen to Mac Dre. Right. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like growing up, you don't listen mm -hmm. to that's he from my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. You listen to that's what you listen to. So I didn't listen to to, to Jay Z until I had a roommate in the minor leagues that was a big Jay Z fan, mm -hmm. and that's all he played one summer. Mm -hmm. So then I kind of got on it. Like it was what was crazy. that? Like ninety nine eight. See, yeah, see, it was right? Ninety eight. Same summer. thing. I didn't start listening to Jay Z until I was at UCLA with teammates that were from other places. You know what I mean? Like it wasn't. We listened to West Coast music. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. It was, you know what's crazy? People always make, like, back then, people always made fun of E-40. Now they... Come on. Respect. Now they finally get his respect. Not yeah, now they respect. Not, not your not own yourself, but, like, on DJ the East Screw. Coast and shit, like, oh, would you listen to E-40? You know what I'm yeah. saying? That was, like, a dig yeah. back in the day. Now it's like, the shit. they got to respect him. He you know what I'm saying? just performed the other day at a name drop moment at Gabby Union's uh, birthday party. Oh, yeah, I seen and, that. Uh, I seen him, that. Uh, Short, Short, and uh, her little cousin, Sweetie, but... 40 is a fucking legend. 40 yeah, a legend, bro. She a fucking up. legend, man. Big time warrior fan. He, rock, he rocked with us the whole, he, he, be, he been rocking with the Warriors, so you know I fuck with 40, too. Yeah. Be I thought you were going to say Sebo. Oh, Sebo, of course. Sebo. See, I'm saying, yeah. I, I, in Texas, we had a uh, DJ named DJ Screw, Recipe DJ Screw, and he, right. and he used to slow the music down. But Sebo, 
uh, Spice One, Brother Lynch. all that, and that's Brother how we learned Lynch. about Jay Z yeah. too, because he Brother used to screw ma- so music from everywhere. Yeah, so we heard M- MC8, all that. He used to screw all that music. Okay, yeah. See, we we was just on the West Coast shit. Like when me, I was in high school. I was listening. The only outside person I was really listening to was uh, Master, Master, P. Master no, P. No, Master P. The only outside person I was listening to was Biggie. I always gravitate, <laughs> my fat ass always gravitated towards <laughs> fat rappers. Yeah, yeah. So I like Heavy D, Biggie, uh-huh. you know what I'm saying? Uh, like, yeah. I you didn't say Mac like, Mall. Mac Mall. Yeah, yeah. Mac Mall, yeah, that's, that's the homie. Know. Yeah, of course. Yeah, so I was Maul. like Sebo, Brother Lynch, all the Bay Area shit, yeah. Snoop, Spice, you know, Maul. Dre. Mall had a classic album. His first album <laughs> was a classic. Selly Cell. Selly Cell. Mm-hmm. You need to get right. They get right. They get Mac right. Mac Mall, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. What's, uh, what's your favorite restaurant out here? Favorite restaurant, uh, Carbone. 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 We, we, might, we might need to hit that tonight. That spicy rig and tell yeah. We might need to go straight from there. That's spot, man. Go That's back to spot. our little spot real quick and congregate and yeah. then get the Carbone. <laughs> I think we should. I think we should. That's any spot, hobbies or anything you're looking forward to getting into now in your retired life? Uh, I'm, I want to get better at golfing. Uh, uh, yes, once let's my do shoulders it. healed up. Let's for do sure. it. I'm playing. I'm a big, I love fishing. Okay. I go fishing all over, all over the place. I love fishing. Um, <laughs> I just, so wanna drive. To go I just crazy. wanna drive y'all caddy, watch y'all play, smoke with y'all. Man, I don't wanna play? I don't wanna play at all. Shout Why? out, hey, Wiz Pack. They got the dopest on the You I seen it? Got, Did you yeah, get one? Yeah, them, that shit is yeah, cold, right, crazy. man? Shout out Wiz. That's the best golf bag in the game. Yeah, man. shout out Mike Evans and Jorge, bro. Yeah. They sent me the Wiz Pack. The Wiz Pack is, is dope. It's got a speaker on it. Yeah, it's a golf bag with a speaker. I DJ for y'all. Yeah. I roll, DJ, whatever, but I'm not I'm cool with playing. What kind of clubs you kind of I got I got plus one, plus plus one and a half. I got old ass my uh from my Adidas that used to be Titleist, so okay. I got those, but I need to, I actually need to get refitted. And, I, and I just seen uh, Cobra <clears throat> just came out with a new set. I think I'm going to try to get on that. But How long are you going to be down with your show, uh, uh, I shoulder? I think until Jan- I, I have it on the 25th, and I think what are they the doing? Year. What are they doing to your uh, show? I think they're going to repair the whole thing. Uh, just so I can be able to throw, because right. you know I got the, the boys and mm-hmm. the nine-year-old be able to throw on BP. Right. right. Be able to throw BP to the boys at Yankee Stadium if I had to, you know oh. what I'm saying? Um so they got to repair it all. I Was BP bad in practice? Yeah, yeah. bad I'm practice. Just, I'm just trying to stay. <laughs> hey, man, next time you have a, uh, the, the celebrity game, you got to have me and Jack come. Nah, y'all got to come. Wanna I'm going to do it, next, I'm I'm do it in the summertime next year, like yeah. on the weekend. I pulled up and just watched. I know. Because I happened I to be in town for some other shit, and they said, CC. I was like, damn. Let's go watch. Let's go nah, watch. next that year y'all gotta come out. Yeah. That would tell Even me if like, y'all like do the pod from there. Mm-hmm. That'd, Ooh, be dope that'd be dope. Too. You know what I'm saying? Like oh, on the field. I want to do a live pod. I want to play in pod. Yeah. yeah. Ooh, that's that'd crazy. Be crazy. Play crazy. in pod. <laughs> <laughs> play in pod. Tell me about uh, your foundation and what, what you and your wife do and the kind of stuff you got to do in the community. Yes, yeah, the pitch up <laughs> foundation. Uh, me and Amber started in 2008. Um, we just try to help kids in the, in the hood um, through, through sports and education. Uh, I grew up in a boys and girls club. And I try to like, you know, help those type type of tools. I partner up with the Boys and Girls Club here. Um, we do field renovations. Um, I'm actually doing two now. I'm doing one in Vallejo I'm doing, and I'm doing one in the Bronx right now. What do you guys um, do? Redo the whole park. Um, come in and make it like a big league field. You know, like yeah, when, you, when you're young and yeah, you yeah. just want to play on something nice. Yeah, and play yeah. field, like, like the wiffle ball like field. The pros. Yeah, 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 ball like, the pros. like the pros. Yeah. So we do that um, That's what's up. on both coasts. We've been doing that. Um, we do backpack giveaways here and in Vallejo. Um, and so we you do, guys like, ran a marathon too, right? My wife, my wife has a running team. Duh. She has a bunch of people that runs a marathon. That's I'm not never running. That's not your game, huh? I can't run from here to the door. My heart rate is too tight. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah him, him and his wife are, are great parents because my daughter used to live here. His daughters and my daughter were real, real close, mm-hmm. uh-huh. you know, when they lived there. So, yeah, y'all some great parents because your daughter's a sweet, a sweet girl. Oh, real appreciate smart, it. Real, real appreciate smart. It. <laughs> tell, me, tell me how amazing fatherhood is for you. It's been fun, man. It's been, uh, it's been good. You know, I lost my dad in 2013. We was real close. I was 23 years old, the same year my son was born. Um, so it's been fun to kind of, like, grow up and kind of turn into him. I mm-hmm. see myself, a lot of the shit I say to my son, I'll be like, damn, mm-hmm. I'm my dad yeah, now, you yeah. know what I'm saying? So it's, uh, <coughs> it's fun to be a dad, man. It's, it's, uh, it takes, it makes sports like easy. You know what I'm saying? Like mm-hmm. I come home after a game, they don't care if I threw a no hitter or gave up seven runs. It's like dad's home, time to play, you know, fuck everything else. So that right. kind of like, cause I'm super intense right. when it comes to like sports. So that kind of took, it kind of took, took my edge off a little bit. So it helped me out a lot. Dope. And they, they, I've been to, to, to his daughter's birthday party before. They go all out on the party. <laughs> oh, they parties are unbelievable. I'm sure, I'm sure that's Amber. Parties and Halloween. That's yeah. parties yeah. are all unbelievable. That's all. I just, that's, you know, she's super festive. Right. I just live there, bro. <laughs> I, just show up. I don't be knowing shit. We had a whole, uh, 
We had a whole wedding uh, renewal last year in Napa. I didn't know shit. And you <laughs> brought it up. I, I, I was walking in like, this shit is amazing. I was just as, as amazed as the guest. Like, you said everything up, bro. I just show up, man. It's fun. That's all right. That's all you got to do. Happy, li- happy wife, happy life. All right, man. That's a wrap. My man, CC. Uh, man, we came out to your city, man. We appreciate your time. Thank you for fucking with us. Of course. I appreciate y'all. We appreciate Always, it, bro. You know that. Sure. Thank you. New York has been a blast. All the smoke. Episode four. Find it on Showtime Basketball YouTube channel and all platforms streaming all of podcasts. Them. How many of them? <laughs> all of them. Cool. <laughs>